you know, Gary V is the biggest, you know, uh, uh, supporter of quantity content. Just put it out there and getting yourself out there, make it on a consistent basis. One thing that I did not or wasn't exposed to was what he says to solopreneurs. And, and, and I remember watching a video. It's not a very, very highly watched video, but he talks about mm-hmm. those who don't have teams. And that right now is me. Like I'd really, uh, you know, crush down the size of my team to just me now. Um, and he says for solopreneurs, you know, your main focus is not omnipresence. Your main focus is cash flow. That is your life source. Mm-hmm. You got to figure out how to generate income. Now recognizing that, I, st- I start to see well, how much of my business needs to spend time on social media right now? Yeah. And how much of it should be dedicated towards the platform of YouTube where it's already shown that it's lucrative. There's opportunities for sponsors there. There's opportunities for uh, ad revenue. There's opportunity, all kind of affiliate opportunities. And so I just, it's funny because the, because the Gary V advice is the reason why I've been so quiet on social media this year, ironically. Mm-hmm. And now I'm yeah. all in on YouTube. And the results, I mean, when people see these videos who haven't seen the videos, um, the difference is right there. You see it in, in the production value and what goes into every one of these uh, these short films. See, it's funny you said that because I, when I speak on Gary V, like the things that I actually, like I really like about Gary V, there's all, they, you really can watch him if you watch him enough and start to add certain things up and then eventually you might actually see him say it uh for instance a side thing i was i I remember telling my partner i was like yo like i feel like gary v didn't really double down on this music thing and i think he was thinking about it when he was doing this media run through the music industry but then he was like man this thing is is messed (laughs) up like i don't eh, something ain't right 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 eventually probably a year later from that i actually saw him basically say that like I'm not, I'm not, I didn't get into the music industry because stuff just, <laughs> stuff ain't right, you know? Yeah, he, he <laughs> got a like, taste of this and was like, this ain't, this money ain't like the money I'm already dealing with. <laughs> I might as well go back to wine at this point. This ain't, yeah, this ain't it. I'm making too much money for far less stress. It's, it's a different right. game, which tells you a lot about music and, with, and why I, I had a huge battle, which I could go to, into, like about even committing myself in the music industry. Um, but that, and then, if you look at his path, you know, I know he does a lot of things now. He, we talk about the omnipresence, mm-hmm. but I think he was running his agency for like about five, six years before he even started doing the video thing. Mm-hmm. Like, so he focused and got to a certain level. And that was like his only business like that he was putting his attention to in that time. But mm-hmm. now we see all these other businesses that he does, but yeah. he was you know, heads down and built that. And and a lot of times, you know, you try to Gary V from the jump. That's what people, because that's what people see. And you can't. You You got the infrastructure. You don't got the infrastructure. And that's something I had to to recognize myself. I was, Mm -hmm. you know, shout out to my my former uh, video editor. Uh, I was working him to the bone, like, you know, and, and I, one, he wasn't getting the, the, the Gary V staff income uh, that I'm sure the salaries that I'm sure that they're providing. Yeah. And then also too, it's not just one person sitting here, you know, on the editing station and saying, Hey, Gary, I got some new content for you You're here. You can post it up. It's a, it's yeah. an entire pipeline and system. I imagine of folks who he has a department dedicated to that. Right. Um, yeah. And that's not even the business. It's almost like he's hiding in in, in plain sight because you see him all the time. Yeah. You may get the the illusion that he's not really doing anything except for social media. But it's yeah. like every time you see him, he's in the office. Every time you see him, he's out and about getting ready to go to a speaking engagement or he's in the car traveling to another destination or he's in an alleyway yeah, yeah. that's outside of a venue that he might be at. So uh, sometimes we, we, we get that loss as viewers and uh, we immediately try to run our business. And it's funny because we try to, basically we try to run our business like a corporation and we don't have the staff of a corporation. Um, yes. I took a skill shit. You over hire and you don't have the funds to keep, Come on, keep man. that infrastructure. Like, yeah. Or even the, like, the, you, the funds is definitely something that, you know, there's folks who are finding a lot of success right now as, um, you know, at home entrepreneurs and they're, they're, you know, doing all the things they're doing. Maybe, maybe they had a course that took off and they think they have the funds and they may have the funds just to pay bare minimum 
uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, minimum wage. What they're not anticipating is that, you know, every business goes through, uh, you know, uh, rises and dives. And so if you are not aware of how to maneuver your business in different seasons where it may not be as uh, profitable, you put yourself in a situation where you were like me and that I had uh, had an assistant, amazing assistant, shout out to Spence. I had an uh, amazing video editor, uh, but I had him doing micro content. I had him doing course content. I had him doing, and this was all so that I could focus on the things that I were, you know, making the business more profitable at large. Mm -hmm. And it looked like a great system and it was for a long time, but it wasn't sustainable because, um, as he evolved with the business, his his needs changed, right? Uh, and so, to be able to adjust that and and provide, that just wasn't what the what the business was going through. And uh, yep, you know, yep. when things got real hot and and, uh, and 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 crazy with the business last year, I had to let him go because it just wasn't it wasn't generating what was necessary to to uh, continue to help him grow with it. But the blessing in disguise for that is now. He gets to focus a thousand percent on what he wants to ultimately do because he was an artist and a video editor. I get to focus mm -hmm. now on one thing at a time. My favorite acronym in the whole world is FOCUS. Follow one course until success. Now, I sit here week to week and I plan out one video for YouTube a week. Now, some people be like, oh, that's you can't do that. You're not going to grow with that. If you see the type of videos that are being produced, you realize that it's not just sitting here and saying, Oh, I'm going to throw the camera on. No, no, I'm, I, I map the entire thing out with a script. Then I have a shot list and uh, I have locations. We go scout throughout the week, my wife and I, and uh, it, it's, it's something that because I put so much work, I, I have a full day shoot and then an additional 18 hours to edit it. Mm -hmm. And uh, an additional three hours just for the thumbnail, trying to figure out different angles at which you know, this grabs the eye. Is this something that's falling into the rule of thirds? Is this something that could be better utilized as an object or with my face in it? Um, yeah. So all these things now are like, that's what's going into it. And now the results are showing themselves to me in a very short period of time since the year jumped off. Uh, all the videos that I've been putting out uh, have been performing so well, not even necessarily on the view count, but on the retention level. And you know how important those metrics are to YouTube when they're trying to suggest you, yeah. put you in front of other people. And now, last thing I'll say is that I got folks in my, I got folks that have been part of my 200,000 subscribers who haven't seen a video from me in two or three years because I was throwing the algorithm way too many random things. Now, mm -hmm. for the first time, they're seeing my content repopulate itself on their, their news feed because the content has become focused. So now the algorithm is working in my, in the algorithms are working in my favor. And uh, all I had to do was just produce better content. Yeah, man, that's, that's beautiful, bro. Because, you know, I think the, the personality of an entrepreneur oftentimes can lend towards lack of focus, even though you feel like you're focusing. And I'm always trying to figure out how do we cut lean um, and, and, and dial back on things. And even the idea of am I do I want to be a content creator first or do I want to be a business person first? Mm, that's right. a huge one. That's a huge one. How, how, how have yeah. you navigated that one? That's, that's, that's an interesting one I want to hear about. Uh, like, well, now more recently, I'm definitely getting more into a business person. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've took some time off of YouTube to build up business, but I thought of it more so at that period, it was more so Let's take some time off so I can focus on this because I don't have time to really go hard on YouTube right now. But then I'll just get back and do both of them. But now I see there's just so many levels and there's still so much more to do. You have to have it's, it's one focus still. I, I'm, I'm too far beyond. And if I look at people that are really doing it well, that are actually business people, that they either had their business on a certain level and maybe even sold right now the business is they're more advisor role right and 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 now they focus on their youtube channel or gary v he has a reality show like i tell people all the time like this dude isn't for he's not doing what we do he's not sitting down and recording himself right that's even if you have an editor there's time right. that comes into sitting down doing everything that you just said right mm -hmm. where he's just 
I'm walking around, I'm Kim Kardashian and you know, you're catching conversations and then they decide what's the most engaging thing. They look at the stats and figure out what people are loving for you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if I really look at what people are doing that I, uh, that reflect what I want, then for me, it's like, all right, I can share my, my insights along the way. That's yeah. how I want to approach my content. Right, um, where I don't have to go look up an artist to really understand what's going on and see how they're impacting the fans to build a deep case study. I don't have to put all these pieces together. I I just need to share the knowledge that I have along the way. And, you know, I might put that in a packaging that's very teachable or digestible, but I'm not putting that level of, of, of effort into it because my wins comes on the back end. All right, mm-hmm. like if I'm there's a lot of guys who, you know, they're not like you where they're a producer sharing marketing, rapper sharing marketing tips and things like that. And they're kind of doing their thing. There's people who like position themselves as marketers, mm-hmm. period. Right. And if you look at it, it's like what real marketing information do they really give that's not super general? And how quality is it truly? Where is it coming from? Because yeah. it might yeah. sound good to the guy who doesn't understand yet because they haven't gotten to the level to deal with the problems that that bad decision created, Mm -hmm. Uh, which to me, entrepreneurship in in general, I realized this whole process is like, you're constantly undoing the the things that you didn't know. It's like, you got to this level, but it's like, dang, if I knew better, I would have been able to skip that level Uh and just do it a better way. Uh, So me, though, looking at, the difference is like I had to actually make sure I'm doing what I, I talk about, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like what's the difference between just being able to run an ad and and, and actually being able to break an artist, mm-hmm. right? So you can see artist after artist after artist now where there's been a song that's blown up because of work we've done, mm-hmm. right? And they're associated within those relationships that, that were built. That's what look, winning looks like from, yeah people in my position that doesn't look like I have a huge social following and I'm saying all these things that people love because it's, but it's actually not in depth and not going to get them towards their, the goal they actually want to, right. even though I could make money that way and, yeah. and more yeah. money faster probably. But I, I think what's, what, what I hope is not lost upon the folks that are listening to you say this is that the big thing that at least pops out to me is a self-awareness that you have. And I think that a lot of people go through this and they're putting on suits that were never tailor fit for them. They just like the way they look on somebody else. And what I mean yeah. by that is that they jump into yeah. this. Sometimes it's the anti-social producer who's like, well, I gotta make content, so let me go make content. Or it's the, the artist that's like, I don't really do anything outside of making music, so I'm gonna go ahead and make up a hobby and then like now shoot, you know, like these, you know, these grainy behind the, 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 the scenes of me cooking. And it's like, it, 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 that, that was never what they came here to do. And I think mm-hmm. recognizing how your personality plays into that. And if you recognize your personality as being a advantage for you, mm. if the only thing that will ultimately determine if it is an advantage for you is if you figure out how to utilize that a gun is only a gun if you shoot it the right way yeah it's only a weapon if you shoot it the right way you can you can spin a gun around by the barrel that's not going to make it go off right but you have to know how to use it and i think it's the same thing with the skills that we attain through this i'm recognizing for myself like as much as I position myself and as much as I have done the things that are necessary to be to, to be the title of an entrepreneur, there's a lot of this I don't want to do. There's a lot of this I don't really have fun doing. If I'm going to just be real transparent with you, like um, sometimes the launch of a product, like I love planning. I love campaigning. I love all that. Um, email sequences are not something I'm always excited about. Um, you know, the, the, the aggressive selling of the, the fifth and sixth email that falls on a Thursday and Friday when people get paid, like it's certain things that I empathize with that I'm like, there's gotta be a different way to do this. And I know it's sales. I understand the the nature of it, but it's gotta be a different way. The, the having to put my accolades in front of you in the first three seconds for you to, be, for you to believe that what I'm saying is valid. Um, like, you know, I, bro, I, bro, I get these ads all the time where it's like, 
Lamborghini, 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 Lamborghini. And it's like, you know, black, 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 black. And it's like, yo, that's what's up. Good for you. How do I know that this applies to what I'm going through right now? And yeah, so yeah. my thing is like, I, there's a lot of things, even with funnels, like I don't dislike any of it. I understand it all has a purpose. I don't really have a feeling about it. It's just a matter of recognizing who you are, I think is a big thing. And then saying, all right, so how do we play this to where this personality trait of mind that other people may see as a disadvantage becomes an advantage? The person that is so argumentative in business meetings probably needs to be on a podcast platform because you have a skill for arguing, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the producer, the, the, the artist that tries to micromanage their manager, maybe you should become a manager eventually. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you, you, I mean, you don't want to hear that because you're actively pursuing this as an artist, but a lot of times we follow what Stephen Pressfield as an author says are shadow careers. They're the first careers that come before our real careers, the shadow, mm -hmm. basically the career we're supposed to be in. And there's a lot, there's a lot of rappers right now who are rappers by title, but a and R's by practice and they don't recognize it yet, or they may never recognize it because they never activate that part of things because they're too bitter or too angry about the way things played out as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, I think you saying that about you being more, uh, what's more appealing to you is being on the business end of things because this is what you're great at. And so when you go in there and execute, you're able to do your Bill Belichick thing and just put everybody in their place and what it needs to be. Um, yeah. For me, I don't always like being in those leadership positions because it's hard sometimes for me to not be befriend my employees right or mm -hmm. empathize what they're going through and you got to have a certain you got to have a certain way that you are with them so that they don't get too comfortable and still present right. the work so there's things that i'm learning in real time and and what i'm recognizing is before i used to think it was like anti-entrepreneurship anti-ownership to do sponsor content and to do affiliate stuff that's been my saving grace the last few months. And I'm recognizing now, like, damn, that is something that you're great at. And that is something that won't always be there or possibly won't always be there uh, mm -hmm. when you get into your mid forties and it's not so appealing for these producers to, you know, listen to what you have going. I like to believe that I'll continue to evolve and that my audience will continue to go with me. Uh, but you, nothing is promised. Nothing, nothing, nothing is promised. So, while the getting is good and while these companies are hitting me up left and right, I would, I would be, it would be unwise of me not to at least have the conversation. And within the last few months, man, the, the sponsors that I've had access to, it's just been, uh, it's been crazy to know that that was just waiting in the wings, but I was being very bullheaded and stubborn about my entrepreneurship.